Okay, let's move on to week three, and you kind of touched on it. It's not exactly a killer week of games, but there is some stuff there, like if you're a college football fan, to to watch. Um, Yeah, we'll just start at the beginning. Uh, My first game that I wanted to talk about a little bit, Louisville is playing Indiana in Indianapolis. Louisville a 10.5 point favorite. I don't know that there's all that much interest in this game other than just I I feel like this this will tell us something about these two teams especially Louisville like is there a chance they can compete in the ACC which feels a little more wide open than it used to at least as far as getting the title game um but yeah um LSU at Mississippi State LSU a nine and a half point favorite obviously a disappointing start to the season for them, but um, this feels like kind of their second real game. Mississippi State has looked okay this year so far. Had to had to go to overtime last week to beat Arizona. Um, what do you expect out of this game? So here's the thought. What if Florida State, who was in a very, very close game, in fact, LSU led Florida State at halftime. That was a mm-hmm. close game throughout until late, and it kind of got away. What if Florida State goes undefeated goes to the playoff, turns out Florida State's legitimate. They're really, really good this year. LSU is one and one currently with a a loss, which in my in my view was a close loss. I know the, the end result wasn't, but like what what if LSU goes on a run after that? Like LSU could be sneaky good and we don't know it yet. Um I think that was that was a thought I had. Mississippi State is I think the most veteran team. I think they have the most amount of experience of anyone in the SEC. Um, super veteran at, at quarterback. Will Rogers seems like he's been there forever. Mississippi State's a good team. Like I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a good feel on this one. Definitely not betting this game. I think these are two legitimate. I think they're they're two good teams. They're two good football teams. I think it'll be. It's at noon. Noon kick. It's an entertaining watch. I think of of all the noon kicks. I think I, that one would be right up there. I think that one's pretty interesting. Yeah, I would agree. I, I don't know that I have any strong feels on it either. Um, at 10, I'd probably like Mississippi State to cover, but definitely not something I'm touching. Uh-huh. All right, Florida State is at Boston College. Florida State, a 26.5 point favorite. That line has actually come down several points. It was over four touchdowns earlier. Um, Boston College not looking real sharp this year. Um can we learn anything from this game, or is this gonna just gonna be a dump trucking? <laughs> no one has exceeded. Okay, so when you look at um, teams against the spread, their record against the spread, Florida State's two and zero against the spread. They have the highest margin of victory over mm-hmm. the point spread uh, of anyone. It's them and Texas State. Texas State mainly because of that that big win against Baylor, right? Mm-hmm. Florida State's number one though. Like they have far exceeded the Vegas expectation. Like, I think I think they win. I think they. I think Florida State's legitimately really, really good. Um, is this a chance for for a sleeper game, a a trap game, if you will? You know, kind of sleepwalking into a a noon kick. You know, in Chestnut Hill. Like, I mean, I don't think teams just get up to go to Massachusetts. You know, to play football. <laughs> but Florida State's definitely the better team. Like, if if they show up at all, if they're if they're mentally there, they win this game by far more than twenty five and a half. You can question the, the mentality. I like. I think that that could maybe tell us something. But Boston College is not very good this year. Boston College yeah. sucked last week against Holy Cross. Yeah, like they they were not good. Boston College <laughs> is not very good this year. Florida State's legitimate. This should be Florida State should win in cover. They should win. They should cover. The Northern Illinois team that beat Boston College in Week One just lost to an FCS team in Week Two. Um, yeah. This line feels suspiciously low, suspiciously low to me, but I don't know. We'll see. I might talk about it later. Okay. All right. Penn State is at Illinois. Penn State favored by 15 and a half. Illinois coming off a tough loss to Kansas. But this specific matchup in the past has given us some bangers. <laughs> um, yeah. Penn State, you could argue this is one of the tougher games in their schedule. Obviously, Ohio State and Michigan are the two toughest. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, any chance we see kind of an interesting game that that is a little too interesting for Penn State's taste late in the fourth quarter? Penn State has been mauling people um, going back, not, yeah. not just this year, but last year as well. Everyone ex- with the exception of Michigan, Ohio State. Penn State yeah. beats up on the rest of the Big Ten. 
I mean, they're the better team, clearly more talented. Mm. I think they do. I think they go in. I think they win. I think they cover again. I think the favorites roll um, in these two, in the games that we've talked about so far. Yeah. I Penn state has impressed me so far. I think they're legit. I think Penn state has a chance to go 12 and 0 and go to the playoff. Like I think they're that kind of good, especially with Michigan, Ohio state, maybe struggling a little out of the gate. Penn state's clicking. Um, yeah. I think they're a force. I really do. I think they're going to have a say in the big 10 this year. I think, yeah, I think they'll be legitimate. Illinois has also started a little slower, maybe than than than. I don't, I don't know if it's fair to compare them to last year or not. I, you know, it's that's that's so tough because it because it is still Illinois. You know, this isn't. Yeah, this isn't a, a you know a top program at least not yet. But they are ascending. Bielema is doing a good job there. At the end of the day, I trust Penn State too much. I think that's kind of what I what I go back to. The talent deficit's too big. Yeah, Kansas State is at Missouri. Kansas State favored by five and a half. A year ago, this game was played at Kansas State, and I was all over it. Like, I had strong feelings that Kansas State would win that game, and they did soundly. I I don't know what to expect this year. I think Missouri is better than they were last year. Kansas yeah. State probably a little worse. Um, this is this is definitely a game that I would just stay away from as far as the line goes, but I'm very interested to watch it. Like, I do think this could be a very fun game, and we'll learn something about these teams. Missouri has a good game in them every now and then. Yeah. Like, like the Missouri, they have a a they have a surprising amount amount of talent on their roster, and like as the as was the case in the Georgia game last year, they can jump up and give someone a scare. Kansas State, that like Kansas State mauled Missouri last year, though. <laughs> like that was a bloodbath yeah. last year. So they hopefully, did. yeah, I think revenge game maybe for Missouri. I don't know. I I don't have a strong leaning on this either way. Sure. All right, this game was a little weird to me. Minnesota at North Carolina, just an absolute clash of styles and yes. everything. North Carolina yes. favored by seven, which felt a little low to me. I'm not sure what to think about it other than it's just a, like I said, a clash of styles. Minnesota has a good defense. We know this. Do you have an expectation on what's going to happen in this game? No, no, no. Clue. <laughs> North Carolina is, I, I have, yeah, no shot of predicting anything that happens to them. After what we've seen, I guess maybe I was a little surprised. The line's only at seven and a half because Minnesota did not look good. Um, they, I mean, they they did beat Nebraska week one. Nebraska doesn't look real good. Like it's on the road for Minnesota. Like they have to go to North Carolina. Yeah, I, like I don't have a good feel. Some of these things, some of these games, some of these non-conference games, you're just like, I, I don't know, man. Like I don't know what's going to happen here. This could be, anything could happen here. It's North Carolina. Yeah, that's my bad. I, I said seven. It was seven yesterday, I believe. And now it's seven and a half. Um, I might talk about that later. We'll okay. see. South Carolina at Georgia. Georgia's first real game, I guess, this year, right. favored by 27 and a half. Now, South Carolina has not been as impressive as we thought, but yeah. this game, historically, there's been times when South Carolina did better than expected against Georgia, including a win that you all remember several years ago. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it feels probably like a different time when you don't expect Georgia, you don't feel worried about South Carolina like you used to, I would assume. But do you feel like we can get a a grasp of how good Georgia might actually be this year from this game? No, no, I do not. (laughs) I do not think that South Carolina's offensive line can block Georgia. If you cannot block North Carolina and you gave up nine sacks to North Carolina, what do you think is going to happen when you go up against one of the best defenses that we've seen around here in a while? I mean, this Georgia defense, it's been it's been good for for a number of years now. They've got some legit pass rushers, too. So no, I, I don't, I mean, unless they go, unless they have some offensive linemen that they were just holding out on us, you know, or they, they were yeah. saving plays, you know, they, they didn't want to show their hand too much against North Carolina. So they get smoked because they wanted to save all their good plays for Georgia. I mean, I, I guess it's possible that that happened, but I, I mean, North Carolina was the winnable game for, for them. They had to have shown their, all of their cards in the North Carolina game. I thought that was their best shot. And yeah. Yeah, I think I, it's a home game for Georgia. I think Georgia smokes them. Like I do, I think Georgia will will beat them and beat them by a bunch. I I don't think South Carolina is really going to have much success on offense if they can't block better. I mean, sure. I think it just kind of comes down to that. All right, Washington is at Michigan State. Washington favored by 16, which I thought was a little low considering all the situations going on there. Washington crushed them last year, threw the ball mm-hmm. all over the yard. Uh, Mel Tucker has been suspended. Um I think we expect him to be fired for cause there. Um, Yeah. So basically they, 
I'll just briefly touch on it for those who didn't hear. And this was a while ago, apparently. Like this has been kind of brewing, and I don't know. Maybe they were looking for evidence, but apparently, Tucker hired, or Michigan State, I should say, hired a somebody to talk to the team about respecting women or something, and then he was uh, inappropriately texting her. We'll say um, the very same person. So mm-hmm. that has him, yeah. Suspended at the very least and probably worse. Um, clearly not what you want. Um, although if you're Michigan State, obviously, like, they're all thinking it. This is a nice way to get out of a massive contract that he was not living up to. Quite I was going to say, is it is it not at all suspicious that, it, <laughs> like, the timing of it? You know, it, it happened a while ago, and we we just – we didn't say anything. And and now Michigan State, it, they're 2-0, and Right. And if Michigan State beats Washington this week, his job is secure, right? Like, like it's successful. He's he's had a successful year. And if we really want him gone, maybe we get rid of him just so he doesn't have the chance to beat Washington and, you know, cement himself in. And then we also don't have to pay his buyout because we can fire him for cost. I'm just saying it, there's way too many. I, I'm not a tinfoil hat guy. That's not me. But this is blatantly obvious, right? Like, this is just <laughs> so obvious that, that of what Michigan State's doing here, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything to counteract that, especially if you talk. I mean, if you talk about it, it happened a while ago. I would think, like, obviously, it's just allegations at this point. Sure. But if it's on, if it was by text message, then there's proof of that. Like, you should be able to have proof of that one way or another. I would imagine we see him gone, um, probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, unless there's no proof, in which case that would lend even more credence to the tin foil hat side of it, but. He he said just a few hours ago that the whole thing was completely made up. There's no part of it. So wow. the, the the bright side, someone's going to be right. Like like you know what I mean? It's so, yeah. this stuff was this stuff was all over the phone, and you know proof or it didn't happen. Like you do have yeah. to provide you do have to provide something you know to fire a guy for cause. Um, I I'm not right. going to get into the, the the morals of this all. Like I don't yeah this is that's not really what we're here for. But in order to fire the guy for cause and not pay his buyout you like you're gonna have to look at some text messages like we're gonna have to see some phone records something yeah. um I, yeah it's it'll be interesting i think it's it could be a little bit of an ugly situation i will say i think it's an unpleasant distraction to um to michigan state um we washington's a good matchup um anyway like for michigan like that just doesn't really work out i mean or we don't view we don't view michigan state as a good matchup um against washington so yeah, this is the one that I, I already have money on. Like, I'll be really honest. I'll put this one out there. I think, yeah, I like Washington this week. Shocker, I guess. Yeah, that, that feels like Washington should probably go ahead and just do what they did last year, throw up a whole bunch of points against Michigan State with all of that going on. Sure. All right, Tennessee at Florida. This is kind of a sneaky, sneaky game here. Um, Let me see. Has this line moved? I think it's now seven points. I had seven and a half yesterday. I, I got six and a half as six of just, and a, half few, also out just there, a few yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tennessee hasn't exactly lit the world on fire. Florida lost to Utah, as we know. Um, so obviously two schools that have not started the season the way they would have liked to. Is this where maybe, maybe we see Joe Milton actually lose a game because he's not handing hooker. Okay. So <laughs> It, doesn't the line smell a little funny? Okay, when you say that Tennessee hasn't looked good, it, it was the one game. Like, like they absolutely came out and hammered Virginia and covered the covered the point spread last. Took week, them a while to get going, but you're right. Fair, fair. But they did win and they did cover and they were. I mean, they completely shut down Virginia, right? Like that was. A, they had a good week one. Tennessee had a good sure. week one. Week two was not as good. I think they only put up thirty points against. I forget even who they were playing. Not a good team. Austin P. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They should have put up. 50, right? How much of that could have been a look ahead game? Um, looking ahead to Florida, how much of that could have been, you know, like, okay, there was a, there was a players only meeting afterward. Tennessee had like a big players only meeting. Like this was not an acceptable performance. I think Tennessee's a good football team. I think Florida's a good, I think Florida's good. Like, like I actually think like this will be a fun game. I think the line is spot on. I think it's wildly under what people think. I think most of the money will be on Tennessee. I'll say that. I think most of the money will be on, especially right yeah. now under a touchdown. 
I think a lot of the money's going to be on Tennessee. I think you need to be really careful <laughs> about getting yeah. on something like that. This is a game that I actually will be going to. I'm really excited. It's going to oh, be wow. a fun, yeah, night game um, in in Gainesville, Florida. Me and some some friends are going. This will it's going to be entertaining. I think, yeah, a good night game in the swamp. It's going to be fun. I think it'll be. This is not that we don't have fan a, a bunch of fantastic Saturday night games. This one here will be. There's a there's a lot on the line for both of these teams and both of these fan bases. They the, both of these teams really need this win. Right. I, I'm not predicting the upset or anything. I do mm-hmm. think that there's definitely definite upset potential, especially since the game is at the swamp. Um, yeah. yeah. And Joe Milton, obviously he could go out there and put up just bonkers numbers and make this a mm-hmm. runaway. He could also m- keep, <laughs> keep Florida in this game by himself. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. This is a fun game. Pitt at West Virginia, the backyard brawl. This, this started the season a year ago. We loved it. And now they're back. Um, Pitt favored by one and a half. Pitt was not very good last year, last week. They lost to Cincinnati. Phil Dracovic has not exactly been lighting the world on fire, their new quarterback. Um, West Virginia has shown fight. Like, they're not good. Neil Brown still in the hot seat. But that could change with a win here. Like, this is an act. Like, I feel a lot better about their chances this year than his last year, I would say. I was surprised as well about how, how physical West Virginia looked. Like they're not really getting pushed around like I thought they would. I thought they wouldn't have any fight. They they proved me wrong. Like I guess I yeah I was just wrong on that one. Pitt also, yeah maybe not as good as what we thought. Like we thought maybe we were maybe a little higher on Pitt. I think the line is accurate. I mean coin flip game almost. It's yeah Pitt favored maybe by a point. Um, it's on the road. It is in Morgantown. So yeah I no I I think it go, could go either way. This would be a huge win. For Neil Brown, if he could pull this one yeah. off, he, he this would be a massive win for him. I I don't think you could you can um yeah overstate that he um for a guy that took a lot of criticism. I mean there was money on him being the first coach fired um this year, yeah. and it doesn't look like he's gonna make it at least if the Mel Tucker thing keeps on going <laughs> the way it is. So yeah, good for him. I'm saying he's off to a good start. This is an opportunity for him to really make a statement here early, right. Okay, BYU at Arkansas. Arkansas favored by ten and a half. Interesting matchup. Just kind of a feels to me. It feels like a contrast, but I also feel like there's also some similarities between, like in the styles of play between these two programs. Yeah. Um, BYU, their first season in the Big Twelve. Arkansas, a very quiet two and zero. I would say um, this feels like maybe it's their first decent game, decent opponent. Um, any strong opinions from you? Like, is Arkansas good? Is BYU good? Do we have any idea? <laughs> Not sure. It, it's an entertaining game, though. These are fun. Yeah. These are fun non-conference matchups. Yes. Um, Arkansas, like the quarterback play, I've, I've already mentioned, I like KJ Jefferson. I think he is the, mm-hmm. the best quarterback in the SEC. I think he's underrated nationally. I don't think he gets enough love for what he does. I think he's a a, a dual threat that has a really nice arm, and he's got a lot of experience. Um, he's been there for been doing it for a while now there at Arkansas. So, yeah, I, I think Arkansas clearly a step better. I think the numbers about right there at Arkansas by nine and a half. Um, it's at their place um, there in Fayetteville. So, yeah, no, I, I yeah, I think it, it's going to be entertaining. Um, another good night game to watch. Neither team is ranked. That doesn't matter. They're both undefeated. Both of these teams have a lot out there ahead of them. Um, a win here could really vault Arkansas. Um, yeah, into it's going to be. I mean, conference play for Arkansas is going to be tough, right? Like you've got a lot of tough games coming up um, ahead of you. You need this one if you're the Razorbacks. I think. Um, yeah, I think they they kind of have to have this one if you're Arkansas. Right. One more game to touch on that is I think is sneaky sneaky interesting game in the in the night session. There, Georgia Tech goes to Ole Miss. Ole Miss favored by 20 and a half. Georgia Tech not looking too bad so far. Um, the first full year under Brent Key. They almost beat Louisville in week one. Ole Miss didn't look quite as impressive as I expected last week. Now, I'm not calling for an upset or anything like that, but I do think this is a more interesting matchup than the spread would have you believe. I could easily see Ole Miss winning this game by three touchdowns, but I'm curious to see if this one can – be close for a half at least. And and what we, what we see out of these two teams. 
Haynes King has looked pretty good in yeah. the limited amount that I've seen from him. Um, it's good to see a guy go somewhere and and get another shot and make the most of it. I think too mm-hmm. too often, yeah, guys just transfer out just to, you know hoping that like yeah yeah too often the transfers don't work and especially for him it, he's a guy that you could have easily forgotten about. Um, no, he's looked good at Georgia Tech and the, again I've only seen him a, a limited amount. So Ole Miss is a good football team as well. Yeah, I, I Georgia Tech's like sneaky competitive. They really have. They've been for the last six, seven games, even going back to the end of last season, sneaky competitive. Um, I kind of like the Yellow Jackets here. I, yeah, I think Georgia Tech covering the twenty points, I think is very doable for them. I really do. Yeah, 